Hi, I'm Paul, the running shoe guru. This is Marathon Handbook, and this is Sakoni's ever increasing range of high performance daily training and racing shoes. So, here we're going to take a look at seven of Sakoni's latest racing shoes, training shoes, high performance shoes, shoes that feature the brand's latest cushioning technologies, carbon plates, some without carbon plates, but I'm going to try and break down what each shoe is best for. So we're gonna dive straight in with the Sakoni Triumph 21. Now the Triumph 21 is only a slight change from the 20, the previous version, but there are some nice updates to the model. Obviously it's been around for 21 generations now, and it's always been the brand's top of the range everyday training shoe. First of all, changes over the 20, which for me are quite significant, although only quite small updates that you may not even have noticed. In version 20, you actually had um, two seams in the heel area here. That's gone. Now, it may just be me. I didn't notice anybody else um, having an issue with this, but my Achilles is quite sensitive from many years of track running in spikes and, and one thing or another. But the new seamless heel in this, very plush, no irritation for me at all. And I noticed that update and it did feel a much better fit straight away for me. We've also got a flat knitted engineered mesh upper. Again, really nice. I really like the upper on this shoe. Perhaps been wearing it a little bit too often, been wearing it for just casual use as well because it's just so comfortable. And this nice striking white and, um, and green colorway is very fresh for the summer. But let's have a look at some of the technical details. The Triumph 21 is £170 in the UK, $160 in the US. Men's coming in at 279 grams, that's 9.8 ounces. And the women's at 250 grams, 8.8 ounces. Stack height is 37 millimeters in the heel, dropping to 27 in the forefoot. So a 10 mil drop. For me, that's really runnable, really everyday training shoe category. And it is this Power Run PB. So it's the PBA based midsole. It's very responsive, resilient, got a really nice spring to it. And with the deep stack in the Triumph, it's just really plush for everyday miles. Outsole, plenty of coverage on there. One thing you do notice with the uh, the Power Run PB midsole is that it does seem to uh, pick up a little bit of the dirt from the road. Um, it seems to become ingrained in there quite easily. For those long runs, even short, easy runs, it just soaks up the miles. It feels great after every run. It doesn't seem to lose any of the bounce. And again, that's testament to that deep stack of the form as well. There. This is the neutral shoe, of course, but if you need a little bit of support, then we have the Tempus. The Tempus is £165 in the UK, $160 in the US, Weight, men's 252 grams, 8.9 ounces. Women's 224 grams, 7.9 ounces. So a little bit lighter than the Triumph. Um, and I think that's probably due to the combination of the forms that are used in the midsole. The Tempus is a support category shoe, and it does that by combining the regular Power Run midsole with the Power Run PB. We've got Power on PB here um, on the lateral side of the heel. So when you make ground contact, it absorbs it, soaks up the impact. But as you roll laterally inwards, again, it's a shoe for other pronators, we've got this, and again, you can see mine are well-worn, um, the Power on PB cage, framework, whatever. So we've got inserts within it. The idea is that this will provide all round support, particularly under the medial side of the arch here, so if you are an overpronator, you roll onto that support, it keeps you nice and steady. 36.5 millimetres of stack height in the heel, 8 mil drop down to 28.5 in the forefoot. It does feel a little bit lower if you've been running in the Triumph as well. If you're running in other shoes, I don't think that drop makes a difference. And again, when it comes to drops, it does depend on the variety of shoes, what you're running in. But for me, I've been running in all these shoes and I don't really notice a great difference and can swap and change between one another quite easily without any issues. You can see from the shoe, I've run most of my daily miles in 
the tempers and I do over pronate a little bit, but it's testament to a lot of shoes now, such as the Triumph 21, that it is a very stable shoe. So although it's designed for neutral runners, it's quite stable. If you need a little bit of support, if you're an over pronator, the Tempus, the everyday trainer to go for. And I would describe it as a performance trainer as well, because it's a little bit lighter and it's got that power on PB midsole in there. Now, this is the rather beautiful Kinvara Pro. And it's a shoe that I was waiting for for quite a while because I was becoming rather fond of the Endorphin Elite and perhaps running a little bit too often more than I should do in that shoe. The Kinvara is Sakoni's traditional racing flat road racing shoe. The Kinvara Pro is certainly a racer trainer, but it's, it's a shoe that you can run everyday miles in it, but it's got this big speed roll geometry. The speed roll is um, Sukoni's brand for this curved heel into the forefoot, a nice toe off here. And it's got a combination of the power run foam on the bottom layer and a power run PB foam layer on the top. Sandwiched in between there, is a three quarter length carbon plate. So I'm guessing it kind of starts around here and rolls into the forefoot. Um, it certainly feels like that. It's got a wider footprint, it's very stable. It feels great, it feels fast, it feels light, but it's a shoe that I've instantly been doing my runs in at any pace. I was so excited about it. The first one I did in it was 18 miles straight out of the box. I was clipping along very nicely, thank you, Sukoni, at um, just under seven minute mile pace. It feels like a race in the upper, one piece mesh designed, very thin, quite minimal, nice padding around the heel. Um, it is a perfect blend of training shoe and racing shoe. So let's have a look at some of the stats. It's £200 in the UK, $220 in the US. Men's 269 grams, 9.5 ounces, and the women's 240 grams or 8.5 ounces. Stack height, non-race legal, 42 mil in the heel. Eight millimeter drop down to 34 mil in the forefoot. Like I say, three quarter length carbon plate, and we've got that speed roll technology in there. Um, we don't have an additional outsole on it. It is quite a deep pattern, as you can see, to the outsole. So it should hold up very well. So far for me, no signs of wear. Done about 40, 50 miles in it. Like I said, that 18 miles straight out of the box. And it felt really wonderful. The Kinvara Everyday Trainer, if you want a light shoe. And when I am say everyday, I'm kind of referring to someone that would run maybe five or six times a week. If you are only running three times a week, then no problem at all, go for it. It's totally capable of soaking up high mileage. As you can see, big deep stack, 42 mil, no problem at all there. But it feels very energized. It really does want to get things moving and tow off down the road. So this is the latest shoe in the lineup, the Kinvara Pro. And now we move into the Endorphin range. So the Endorphin Shift is a faster paced daily trainer that adds a little bit of support. So you've got the speed roll, you can see that quite aggressive four foot toe off there, and you've got the support. Now the support comes from this external plastic heel clip or heel counter, and the fact that I'm putting my finger and thumb inside the shoe here, your foot would sit around about this line here. So this section of the shoe is cradling the upper. We've seen this from um, a few brands now. So they're cupping the heel and that provides the stability combined with a broader heel and footprint. So the shoe is wider on the ground, your foot sits within it, it's cradled in there and that creates a lot of stability. And for me, absolutely fine. It's a faster paced trainer. So I was doing interval sessions. I do a lot of uh, sessions on the treadmill. This shoe is really quite surprising. It's very easy to get going in once you pick up the pace. And I think that's due to this four foot geometry. The Endorphin Shift 3 is £140 in the UK, $150 in the US. The men's comes in at 266 grams, 9.4 ounces, and the women's at 229 grams, 8.1 ounces. So things are getting a little bit lighter here and adding to that perhaps more performance racer type feel, 
we've got 39 millimeter stack in the heel and just a four mil drop into the forefoot where we've got 35 millimeters. So a four mil drop and perhaps that combined with this tall locker and gives it that racier feel. Very durable as well. You know, it's just a power run form. So it's the same form that's used in the guide and the ride from Sukoni, and they're their daily trainers. The ride being the neutral option and the guide, the support option. Well, this one sits right in the middle. It's got a little bit of support, but it feels a bit faster. As we pick up the pace a little, we move into the Endorphin Speed 3. Now, the Speed was an instant hit for Sukoni when they launched it a few years ago. Everybody was raving about it and it managed to combine the Power Run PB4 midsole, which is the, the springy responsive midsole, with a nylon plate. So to keep the cost down a little bit, some brands stepped away from carbon plates and introduced nylon plates. I'm not sure that it would keep the manufacturing cost down that much. You've still got to engineer a plate into the sole. It's more of a, a fast workout trainer. Some people use it as an everyday trainer and that's fine if they get on with it and the neutral um, stability isn't an issue because you can see it's quite, not flimsy, but it's got a little bit of twist to it. It's quite an agile shoe. If you've got stability concerns, perhaps the shift would take the place of this one in your lineup. But this is the faster pace trainer, interval work, tempo runs, hill work, speed sessions like that. It offers a really soft, springy, responsive feel. Outsole, we're getting a little bit more of that exposed sole, so you can see a bit of the dirt getting picked up there. But durability is fine. Good rubber coverage in all the key areas in the heel and the forefoot and the toe off there. Quite a few miles in this one for me. And the nylon plate. So it's embedded in there. You can see what we've got is these midfoot wings. Now they're on both the medial and um, lateral side of the shoe. And the nylon plate essentially curves up a little bit to provide a little bit of midfoot stability. It's not a control shoe. It's just adding a little bit of torsional rigidity through the midfoot to what would otherwise be a very, very soft shoe. It's 165 pounds in the UK, $170 in the US. The men's, the weight's coming right down now, 229 grams, 8.1 ounces, and in the women's, 204 grams, just 7.2 ounces. 36 millimeter stack in the heel, 28 in the forefoot, eight mil drop. Trainer category in terms of drop, but absolutely racer performance feel. So it's a trainer to go fast in. That's the endorphin speed. Next up, the Endorphin Pro 3. Now, this is Sukoni's answer to things like the Vaporfly from Nike, the Adidas Adios Pro 3. It's the full-length carbon plate, high-performance marathon trainer. So, let's have a look at some of the stats before we go any further with that one. It's £210 in the UK, $225 in the US, weight 204 grams, so just over that magic 200 gram mark, that's 7.2 ounces. Ladies, 176 grams, 6.2 ounces. Stack, 39.5 mil in the heel, 8 mil drop into the forefoot with a 31.5. I suspect it is 40 mil, so Kony just trying to edge it under that legal 40 millimeters but it doesn't matter it's legal so that's fine full length power run pb midsole full length carbon plate in there as well with the speed roll technology the speed roll technology is a combination of the geometry of the shoe including this kind of cutaway into the heel the rocker four foot shape here and Sukoni's s-shaped carbon plate so the carbon plate dips and twists through the shoe and curls up into the toe off and that's when you're running at speed promotes that nice forward propulsive feel super lightweight mesh upper perforations through the tongue here as well every bit cut away to keep the weight down very minimalist very little support in the upper of the shoe doesn't matter, it's a racing shoe, it's built for speed, it's built for going fast in. It is one of my top six um, choices 
in carbon plated racing shoes. We did do a video a little while ago on my top six favorite carbon plated shoes. We'll put a link up in one of the corners here if you want to check that one out. But the Sukoni Endorphin Pro certainly made the grade. It's fast, it's light, it's a really great choice. And in what are becoming very expensive shoes, shall we say, certainly over the £200, $200, this is in the competitive region, okay? They're certainly not cheap shoes, but it's competitively priced with um, all the other major brands' shoes. And that leads us on to the final shoe in this lineup, the Endorphin Elite. This one quickly became my favorite shoe in this lineup. And I must admit, I became so fond of it, I was um, wearing it a little bit too much. Very minimal outsole exposed on the medial side of the heel here. Did start to scuff away a little bit, probably put 150 or more miles on these already, but it's got everything going on. 280 pounds in the UK, $275. So the pricing is right up there. Only other thing near this will be the Cloud Boom Echo 3 from On, recently released, and Nike's Alpha Fly. So these are the premium end road racing shoes. We've got 40 millimeters of stack in the heel, 32 in the forefoot, an eight mil drop, full length carbon plate exposed there. That's to keep the weight down. And the weight is 204 grams, 7.2 ounces in the men's. Ladies, 185 grams, 6.5 ounces. So just a shade over the 200 gram mark, super lightweight on the foot, striking design in the upper, lots of cutaways, both on the lateral side. Um, see all this cutaway through here and the medial side. Cut away a lot of the, of the upper, lots of perforations in the, in the tongue as well, keeps it very breathable at least as well. Um, and the cutaway in the sole here, that band wrapping under the carbon plate into the upper through the midfoot incorporated into the laces. And this form is on his new form, it's called Power Run HG. Now, to me, it's a different texture to the PB type form, which has that Adidas boost like texture. Whereas the HG form is more of a matte, almost sandpaper like finish to it. Feels very similar to the Adios Pro from Adidas. Um, it's a little bit firmer than Power Run PB, so it's a little bit firmer shoe than the Pro 3, but it's still got a very nice spring to it. It feels very responsive, this twin layer construction with the carbon plate inside. You can see the deep rocker and this S plate S-shaped plate rather in the forefoot, got that steep curve to it. So that really gives a propulsive feel on the toe off. Very noticeable to me as well. And you've got a forked carbon plate in there as well. So it's split in the forefoot. Whether it's that that I can feel that makes it feel a little better, whether it just sits under the metatarsals in the foot a little bit better for me, I don't know. Have you tried it? What do you think? Put your, put your thoughts in the comment below. For my next marathon, it really would be one of perhaps two or only three considerations, but we'll think about that come September. But yeah, I've run a lot of miles in it for this type of shoe, training miles, maybe too much. And it's only since the Kinvara Pro arrived that I've managed to get this same sensation of lightweight, cushioning, propulsive feel in a trainer that's gonna be more hard wearing. That's why I've switched over to this. But for race day, yeah, it's a top contender. Maybe not for 5K, but for 10K, anything longer, fantastic. Really nice shoe. So there we have it. That's Sukoni's lineup of performance shoes. It was quite in depth. I'm sure it's gonna grow, but there's a lot going on. So what's your pick? Which is your favorite? Let us know. Put some comments below. Tell us which you like. Have you got one or more of these shoes? Um, what do you use them for? And the seven here, you could actually wear one each day of the week and you'd have a fantastic range of shoes to choose from. My name's Paul. This is Marathon Handbook. We'll see you soon. Thank you very much.